the spear or the broadsword or any of the others. It's also excellent for health, as you will see later on, because of some of the twisting movements and twisting of the waist is one of the best things you can do for your body. And also that it gives you great stretch when you do the, the quite low movements. It's my belief that all of the internal spear forms have come from this Mudang spear form, because this was, in fact, the original. Um, you need a lot of space and as I really don't want to smash my video camera or any lights or stick the spear through the wall, uh, I won't be going through it, well, maybe at the end if I've got room I'll go outside and do it, the whole thing fully through, but what I'll, how I'll teach this is I'll, I'll go through one section, just, just a section of three or four moves as it should be done so that I can judge exactly where I am so I don't smash into walls and then I'll stop and go over it in greater detail showing exactly how to do each move with each application. We'll start, uh, we'll call it the north, the way we're going to start, so this will be the north towards the camera. And we just stand in a normal position, qigong position, with the stick, stick on the ground, the height of it, the head of the spear should be well above your own head, not too high, but where the spear starts should be just about your own height, just about there. And you'll notice it's quite a small spear as well, mainly because this spear is used for dimmack striking, as well as it does have, of course, the big, the big open, the big open movements, but it also has very fine movements like you see that, Eli? <laughs> you have to take it right out, like an L shape down the neck, which you get by <laughs> doing that sort of a movement. And you'll notice you have to also turn the spear up, up to get that L shape, like bah! That's how it happens. Never use a rattan with Dimmak spear. You use a rattan, you, you have no control, it like this all the time. You need some control, so you need a fairly rigid stick, not too heavy though. This is called Japanese um, oak, sorry, not Japanese oak, Tasmanian oak. And it's a very hard wood, but it's also very light wood. It's quite a nice, excellent wood for the spear. Okay, the names of each posture I'll put on the uh, bottom as I did with the uh, broadsword form. I'll put that on as, uh, when I edit it. So, I'll just go straight into it. Okay, to start with, I'm facing the north. I'm going to turn to the west. Every great internal weapons form begins with a qigong method. This is in order to get your body into a state of sung, which is like a super duper relaxation. In other, it's a grounding qigong. Because without qigong and without grounding, your weapons form just becomes another weapons form, a physical weapons form. You, you need the qigong to set you up for the whole form. So, you take a step out with your right foot and turn it in at 45 degrees. And just turn into a back sitting stance. See how the left foot turned just into a normal back sitting stance, shoulder width and one foot's forward and you're sitting down on your back leg. There's absolutely no weight on the front leg here. Your back is vertical, chin pulled in. As you do that, however, this is what you're going to do with your hands. Just like that. So, what I might do is, I might turn this way to start with and then turn to the camera which will make that the west and then I'll go back to the proper direction because you can see it, you can see what I'm doing better this way. In breath and out breath. Now there's a little thing here which I believe that the Yang Luchan's form got this from. It's that, well I'll just do it, I'll just do it.
three of those. So to start with, we've come up, in breath, and out breath. It's like a lift hands movement from your Taiji form. Now, you put a little bit of controlling weight onto your front leg as you do a clockwise circle with the end of the spear. So it goes. And you notice the other hand is also doing a counterclockwise circle, getting ready. It's going down as that one's going up, see? So it's opposing. See that? Now as this one comes down, this one comes up and extends the fingers. Three of those. I'll just turn this way, the correct direction, so that you can see that very slight controlling weight change. It's not a complete weight change though. In breath, when you put your little bit of weight forward, out breath as your right hand comes forward. I'll just keep, keep doing this, although remember you only do it three times. When I come forward for the left, on the, put a little weight on the left, I'm breathing in and I'm making out as if I'm sucking air through the stick, through my shoulders, and then it comes out of the Laogong point, which is right there, as you breathe out. So it's in through the stick, a little bit of weight forward, clockwise circle, out through the Laogong of the right hand. See what the right hand's doing. I'll go through a whole section of this in a minute, but I just wanted to get this, this qigong correct first, because you, if you don't get the qigong right, the whole thing's just not set up correctly. Okay, again. sinking right down through into the back heel as you do it. Breathing in and out your nose, the tongue's resting on your hard palate, but you should already know of, of this, so there's no need to waste time going over those things. Okay, uh, I'll start this way this time. You notice there's a little bit of a weight here that first in, 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 inhalation and exhalation is not really counted as, it's part of the qigong, but it's not counted as the three that we're going to do. So there's a little waiting time, I'll just do it, and you can see there's just a little bit of a sinking waiting time before we actually begin the um, qigong method. I'm just doing my breathing a little bit heavier so you can hear, hear when I'm doing it and when I'm not doing it. 